Well, finally, fifthly, if we do not flee for refuge, which God has given us, there's no other hope. There's no help for us. If you believe that you can get to heaven any other way, if you're going to work your own way, if you're going to try and, you know, uh, you know, bank on one or the other, and you're going to try to be your best and hope maybe Jesus will help you out, or you're going to try religion and maybe at the end do a deathbed thing, if you are planning something other than fleeing to Jesus Christ, you have no hope. There was no other hope than the city of refuge. You couldn't work your own way out. Hebrews relates the negative emphasis, he that despised, and this is chapter 10, verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy. In other words, if you decided not to go to the city of refuge, then it's just and right that you be killed for what you did. And so what he's saying is those who don't flee to Christ, and the writer of Hebrews says, if you trod underfoot the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant, which he has sanctified an unholy thing, you have despised the Spirit of grace. And that kind of gets us back to Romans 9. People who harden their heart over and over to the things of God find that they're so hardened, they're kind of like a cow that's been branded. Remember my roommate when I was in college at a 10,000-acre Barzona ranch down in Olney, Texas? He used to drive me around the Jeep looking at their prize cows. And his, his mother always wore this big big hat. You know, she's just one of those eccentric Texans. You know, there are no eccentric Oklahomans, I guess. Eccentric Texans with a big hat on. And she pulled out a hat pin once and said, go over that Barzona and poke that brand. I said, are you kidding? That thing weighs over a thousand pounds. She says, no, I want to teach you a lesson. She pulled that hat pin out. I went over and I went, I was that kind of a foolish college student. I would never do it as an adult. But I went over there by that monster cow and I went and poked it and poked it and it never stopped Chewing the old cud, it didn't feel anything in that brand mark. Did you know people that resist God get hardened to the point of being unfeeling because they've resisted the Spirit of God so long? So what he says is, watch out. There isn't one of us who doesn't stand in danger if we hear the gospel and if we ignore it, if we despise it. Lost sinners cannot... Av- cannot risk avoiding an immediate flight to Christ. If you delay, the scriptures say, if you harden your heart too often, you'll be cut off without remedy. You'll come to a point where you can't respond. Well, Christ is easy to reach. His arms are open to all. The entrance is never locked. He's a completely sufficient refuge, and he's the only hope. Isn't that wonderful? But let me tell you one more thing. There's so much more. Because if we examine the differences between the cities of refuge and Christ, we find that Christ is so much better Let me just tell you this, and we'll pick up here next time. Christ is better than the cities of refuge. Christ is better because he's nearer than any city of refuge. No matter how you look at the map of Israel, it would take a good six or ten hour run at full speed to get to one of those cities. Christ is nearer than any city of refuge. You don't have to agonize for six to ten hours. You can call upon him today. That's a, that's a great difference. Second thing is, Christ is better because he is a permanent refuge. You could only stay in that city till the high priest died. Then you had to go out and hope that everybody followed the rules and didn't kill you. You were expelled when the high priest of Israel died. And you had to kind of go out on your own and, and hope. Jesus is a permanent refuge. He said, if you come to me, I'll never cast you out. I'll never put you out on your own. Thirdly, Christ is better because Christ died only for the guilty. Did you catch that? None of us are innocent. Cities of refuge were only for what? Innocent people. We're all guilty. And Jesus Christ said, I only take guilty sinners. Did you know that's why most people don't get saved? They don't think they're guilty. I'm having more and more trouble as I witness finding someone that's really a sinner. They go, I'm not that bad. I'm not as bad as... No, I'm not that bad. Sinner. I mean, I always love doing this. I love... love explaining to people that Jesus Christ died for sinners. And I tell them, and I'm a wicked sinner. And they take a step back. And I say, and so are you. And many of them look at me and they narrow their eyes. They say, I'm not wicked. I say, in the sight of God you are, because he only saves the guilty. One more truth. Christ is better because he is the one who is able to save them to the uttermost. 
A man stayed in the city of refuge for so long, but he would die or he would be put out because the high priest died. Jesus Christ said, I save forever. I save the guilty. I am nearer than any city of refuge. And my arms are open wide. When we come back next time, I want to show you one last point about the cities of refuge, and that is the very names. Because Jesus is not only our one-time city of refuge, he's our lifelong city of refuge. And you'll find that each one of these Hebrew names of these cities has a beautiful meaning. For example, one means shoulder. You flee to the shoulder. When you were little, do you remember the comfort of your father's shoulder? When you were heartbroken, when you were afraid? He says, not only do you come to me once for salvation, you can come and flee to me for refuge when you need comfort. Another one means fellowship. Jesus Christ says, you feel all alone? You can come to me anytime for fellowship. And we'll see, he's a complete refuge, not only for salvation, which is everything, but lifelong all the way through. Have you found Jesus as your city of refuge? Have you seen his arms open wide? Have you realized he's your only hope? Have you found he's closer than, than anything else? Don't neglect him today.